Hello, I'm Dr. David Baskin. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery, the Director of our Brain Tumor Center, and the Program Director of our Neurosurgical Residency. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about becoming a neurosurgeon and the unique and exciting parts of our program. So you're probably all familiar with what it takes to become a neurosurgeon. It's an arduous journey. Four years of college, sometimes with master's degrees and subspecializations, four years of medical school, then you have to pass your, your USMLEs, part one, two, and three, which is at least three days, four, sometimes four days of examinations. Then you complete an internship, which now in neurosurgery is all part of the neurosurgical residency, which is a seven-year program. Then it's a total of seven years of neurosurgical training. And then after that, you have to pass your boards. You have to take written boards. Actually, there's three different exams. There's an early neuroanatomy exam. Then there's a written board exam at the end and then there's oral board examinations. Then, of course, you have to do all sorts of licensing in the states that you want to practice. So it's an arduous journey. It's at least 11 years. Most people are going to do a fellowship, so it's even 12 or 13 years. So if you're watching this uh, video, you're pretty motivated. The Houston Methodist Neurosurgical Residency at the present time has 14 residents. We do about 6,000 neurosurgical cases a year. So we should have at least three to four residents a year. We only have two. Barrow, who does a little bit less than us, has four. So our program's up and running. We have nine neurosurgical ORs running five days a week. Uh, three more are being built. Uh, we have, were established in 2006. We have connections with UTMB and Dul Tulane early on, and now uh, an emerging program with Texas A&M Medical School and Weill Cornell. So we really are privileged to get the best and brightest applicants, and I believe we have the best and brightest residents. Now, the program is intensive. All neurosurgical training is intensive. There's a lot of challenges. Uh, you have to assume graded responsibility, and suddenly you're in charge, and you're in charge of other, other residents and people's lives. Uh, there's a lot of technical challenges to learn how to tie knots and learn how to do all the incredibly complex technical things that you have to do to become a neurosurgeon. And there are uh, what I call going from who's who to who's he. So you're a fourth year medical student, you're the top of the heap, everyone loves you. Now you come and you're an intern and you're kind of on the low part of the totem pole. So it's a journey, and it's, I like to think that we support our residents and help our residents with some of the non-cognitive issues that all residency training programs face, and we really feel like we're a, kind of a one big family. Uh, the curriculum is, is, is intense. In the first year, uh, we have our first year residents send six months in the neurosurgical critical care unit. We believe that's critically important used to be as an internship, you didn't get to do that. You did general surgery. It's all neurosurgery. And if you want to do an infolded fellowship in neurocritical care, which we have, you're halfway done. You also uh, get to spend one month on the neuro-ophthalmology service, which we believe is critically helpful, and then five months on neurosurgery. The second year, you're on, you're on service all year, and you get to do everything. With nine ORs running five days a week, Everybody gets to the OR. We have cases that are on staff by residents. And then we immediately have residents start to take the ABNS board exam for self-assessment. And guess what? Every single resident now has passed the boards, the written boards, in their PGY2 year. Uh, in PGY3, you rotate in Texas Children's Hospital, six months on neurosurgery, four, months on neuro four weeks on neuroradiology, four weeks on neuropathology, and you take the boards for credit. Uh, the fourth year, you get to do a whole lot more. You're, oh, you're really the first, first surgeon on a lot of complex cases. The fear, fifth year is a lab year, and we want everyone to do some kind of research, although now with our infolded fellowships, that can be replaced with um, a, a, a fellowship, and you can actually finish your residency with a fellowship uh, infolded and done. Uh, the sixth year is an incredible opportunity. We have an opportunity for you to go to London at St. George's University in London, which is a major neurosurgical center in the UK, and spend six months there. All the residents who have done it are just rave about it. It's an incredible experience. It's a completely different healthcare system. You get to coordinate all the neurosurgical trauma in London, and by the way, London is a pretty cool place. Uh, we don't have pediatrics here, so we split our pediatric experience. You do. Uh, a pediatric and trauma uh, experience at Dell Children's Hospital uh, in, in Austin, 
and also uh, as, during, the, during your training, you'll do three months of, uh, at the Texas Children's Hospital, which is across the street and is the largest hospital doing pediatric neurosurgery in the country. Uh, and finally, you're the chief resident where you run everything. And as I said, you can do infolded fellowships. These, uh, so the London rotation is just unbelievably outstanding. We've had seven residents do it so far. And it gets, gets incredible rave reviews. Uh, there's Dr. Barber on our faculty with uh, one of the, uh, the senior neurosurgeons. And there's Dr. Jensen with Dr. Marsh, who's written a number of very interesting books in neurosurgery. And of course, if you don't recognize it, it's London Bridge, which is not falling down. Uh, the pediatric residencies, uh, rotations, as I say, we have a junior rotation uh, at um, Texas Children's Hospital and a senior rotation at Dell Children's. At Dell Children's, you do every surgical case. You are the surgeon. And at Texas Children's, it's a highly academic program, so you get to learn neurosurgery. Our residents have done incredibly well. Um, we have uh, just outstanding people. Uh, for example, Amanda Jensen, who uh, is our chief resident, is going to go into pediatric neurosurgery. She's got offers from the top programs in our country. Ryan Osterman, who is our a senior resident, is interested in functional. He's going to go to Barrow. Jonathan Lee is interested in complex spines, he's going to do a minimally invasive fellowship at Miami. So is Dr. Asante. Marcus Wong is interested in endovascular, he's going to have a fellowship here. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, we have re uh, residents from top schools all over the country. Uh, Lindsay Schwartz, RPGY3, is a graduate of Rice University. We have Baylor University graduates. We have Baylor College of Medicine University graduates. And really, we have a, a wonderful diversity of residents from different backgrounds. And we believe in diversity. You can see we have three female neurosurgical uh, trainees. And we're, we're very open to having more. Uh, our residents have done great. Uh, Dr. Sadramel, who just graduated, is now in practice in Orlando. Dr. Bogani is an in incredible practice in, in, in Gainesville, Georgia. Dr. Desai, who graduated with Dr. Bogani, is a, an academic pediatric neurosurgeon and really up and coming. Dr. Steele, was, we had three residents that year, is in practice here, in private practice at, at Houston Methodist. So you can see we have a, a, a variety of outcomes in the places where, patient, where, the, where the, the physicians go. Dr. Wong was our resident. He's now on faculty here. He did a complex spine, uh, uh, minimally invasive fellowship at Miami. Dr. Barber did what I call crazy spine uh, fellowship with uh, Dr. Gokoslin at Brown and now does complex deformity in tumors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a diversity of outcomes from completely academic to you know, kind of private practice and everything in between. And as you see, a lot of our residents stay on faculty here. We're proud of them. They do a great job, and we know they can fit. Dr. Staub is an interesting resident who is now at Texas Back Institute. Dr. Staub developed an incredible program to calculate sagittal balance in the spine, and it's actually going to be kind of a standard. Uh, Dr. Gist is uh, from 2015 is in practice here. Dr. Andrew Livingston is in practice in Nebraska, has one of the biggest practices in the state. Dr. Krishna uh, is now at a, Ma a Mayo Clinic in Phoenix and did, a, did actually two fellowships. He did an endovascular fellowship in Buffalo and then actually did, did some work at, uh, at, at Barrow. And Dr. Rangel has been all over the place. He's an incredible endovascular guy. He lectures at the AANS. He's been at, was at Buffalo. He was with uh, Spetzler and Barrow. He was at the Mayo Clinic. Now he has an incredible practice in Mexico, where he's from originally. And uh, every one of these guys and, and gals are just incredibly accomplished and are doing extremely well. And they all uniformly tell me that when they get to their fellowships, they know how to do 90% of what they're trained to do because we have such an incredible diversity and tremendous complexity of cases that they're almost fellowship trained when, when they start. So uh, we, we've done really well with our recruitment in 2021-22. We matched our number one and two choices. We had 313 applicants. For t we interviewed 43. and We had 186 applicants with US Emily scores greater than 240. Same thing in, two, in the, the year prior. We only took one. We had 181 applicants. In the year before, we got our number one and two choices, and we had 302 applications. So it's a very competitive program. 
And we're very proud of the, our selections. It's not an easy process for either the applicants or the faculty, but we've done really well and we're so proud and, and you know, engaged and supportive of what our residents are doing and are going to do. Uh, we have a number of fellowships in the program. We have a neurosurgical critical care fellowship. We have a spine fellowship. An endovascular fellowship is about to be approved. A neurosurgical oncology fellowship is about to be approved. And a skull-based fellowship and functional fellowships are underway. So you can do an infolded fellowship here. We have so many cases and so many unstaffed cases that there's no influence on the, your case volume or your experience as a resident. So uh, our technology is second to none. We have nine ORs. We have two complex brain suites with about $10 million of technology, including an intraoperative three Tesla MRI. We have virtual reality systems with a 3D virtual reality. We have seven different robots. If you can imagine that, we have three spine robots. We have the uh, functional Rosa robot. We have exoscopic robots. And then we have these remote endovascular robots where you can do an angiogram sitting on the other side of the room. We have three integrated rooms with, with up to seven monitors, uh, and we have a 36-bed neurosurgical ICU. Here's an example of this 3D virtual reality. This is a patient with a giant pituitary tumor. Uh, you can put on an Oculus Rift helmet and fly through the brain. We have two of these. They're a million dollars each. We use them in the operating room. We use them in the clinic. It's just another example of the kind of technology that's available here in Houston Methodist. You're literally just walking through the brain. So uh, it's a rigorous seven years. There's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, we're very proud of our residents and our program and, and hope you'll give us some consideration as you send your applications in. We, we really appreciate your consideration of our program and thanks so much for listening.